Hello Society members and our viewers worldwide. My name is Charles Knippen. I'm the president of the National Society of Leadership and Success. And today I'm happy to be hosting another Thought Leader series. What we are doing in these interview series is that we are sitting down with industry leaders and talking about their stories. And so what we're gonna be doing today is speaking with a music legend, a living legend in the music industry, well, Mr. L.A. Reid. L.A. Reid, he has produced over 100 number one hits on the Billboard charts. He has worked with a variety of artists from around the world, people that everyone know, including people like Rihanna, Usher, Mariah Carey, Future, Outkast, and a range of other artists. And so what we're gonna be talking about today is your story, because you have a new book out. Yes. Called Sing to Me. Sing to Me, yes, I'm and, very happy about it. And it starts all the way back in my hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, as well as yours. Exactly. And so what we'd like to know, you know, it really chronicles your struggles, your successes, mm -hmm. and the artists who you met along the way. Right. And so what I'd like to do is start with a question about where you started. And because your, your start really begins with your passion, music. Right. And if you could, one of the things that's most intriguing for our leaders, all students from around the country, they want to know how you take a passion and you turn it into a career. And so with your passion in music, where did that start? And then what did that transition look like into a career for you in taking that passion? Well, yeah, you're, you're accurate. My, my passion was, is, always has been music. Um, and trying to figure out a music career separate of just having a passion was a bit of a challenge. And music is everywhere. Music is in, on radio. Music is on television. Music is in film. Music is involuntary when you get on an elevator sometimes, right? Music is in cars passing by. So uh, I, I just thought about all the places where music lived, even as a kid, all the places where music lived, and how do I get there? Mm -hmm. So I would go to radio stations, or I would go to music stores, or I would go to television stations, and I wasn't shy. I'm more shy now, but I wasn't shy as a kid, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I would just go in and I, I would go into studios or I, w I had bands, I always had bands, I was in band class. Mm -hmm. I would have to say that I really learned it all in my high school. Really? Yeah. I spent a lot of time in my choir class, although I wasn't a singer. I had a teacher, the late Terry Brown, who was our choir teacher. But the real point of it was I had a teacher who was a huge influence and really allowed me to sort of take a ringside seat and just watch and learn about music. And it all started with that. I wanted to know everything. I wanted to know every instrument. I wanted to know voice tones, uh, harmonies, you know, and I just needed to be around it. And my music teacher also was, um, he was a professional or semi-professional because he actually had a band that played on weekends. Mm -hmm. So eventually he asked me to join his band. So, you know, so everything for me came from school and it really, I'm making a point that probably I don't need to make right now, but it matters to me a lot, is that when there's music in schools, mm -hmm. there are more opportunities for kids to figure it out. So mm -hmm. if music is your passion, yeah. and it's available in school, yeah. then it sort of you know, gives you a path. Mm -hmm. When there is no music, you know, I, it's like, what would the world be like without music? Well, Absolutely. we're kind of seeing it in some cases. Yeah. One of the things that you just mentioned, you know, as far as being persistent, you were just yeah. everywhere. You are just doing everything. And beyond music, for our students who aren't you know, thinking about a career yeah. in music, what are some of those skills or what are some of the things, the traits that you had that you think you can turn that passion into a career regardless of the field that you're interested in? What are some of the things yeah. that you did? Things that really mattered to me were uh, presentation. I always thought that how you present yourself and how you present uh, whatever it is that you're pitching, it always mattered. And to take that a step further, I was such a stickler for presentation that I wouldn't even allow handwriting on my cassette tapes. It had to be typed. It had to be professional, right? Mm -hmm. And that's like a very small example, but it, it sends a message, right? Mm -hmm. Everything was about packaging to me. Everything was presentation. Um, and, and, and it was also really important to just be kind, to be nice to everyone, because you just never knew mm -hmm. And you know, still, you just never know when you're going to meet someone the second time. So, mm -hmm. um, but presentation was everything to me. Absolutely. Yeah. So not only that persistence, but how you presented yourself yes. in every situation. Yeah, because you can be persistent and get on everyone's nerves. That's one <laughs> kind of persistence, and they can't wait for you to get out of the room. Mm -hmm. That doesn't always result in a yes. Absolutely. But if your if your presentation is great, or is as good as you can make it, mm -hmm. if you believe in yourself. Yeah. 
and and you prepare yourself meaning you study mm -hmm. meaning you practice if it's music or if it's sports or, or whatever it may be as long as you put in your 10,000 hours Love and it. then you present it well then you have a much better shot at, at, at achieving something absolutely yeah. in terms of your book well, let's talk about some of those struggles yeah. because going from your place and your music and in a band the deal mm -hmm. first and then kind of evolving into the manager of that band right. you know and then starting your career in music you know and taking a whole different path than playing in a band talk to us about some of those struggles what were some of those things along the way on your journey that were struggles yeah. and how you overcame them you know everything started with necessity you know i i didn't have any aspirations to be a manager for sure I was perfectly happy having a manager. Yeah. I just didn't like the idea that we didn't get money. We didn't, I didn't see any money at the end of a tour. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, wait, maybe I need to be a little more hands-on here and not just be you know, the loopy artist on the back of the bus. <laughs> Uh, so I just took over, yeah. you know, I took over to make, and my, my goal was as a leader, one of the guys in my band said to me, if you're the leader, it doesn't matter how well you're doing it, it matters how good the people that follow you are doing. Mm -hmm. And I took that to heart. So I became the, the leader and the manager of the band just so that I could make sure that the other guys got paid and did well, mm -hmm. right? But it was out of necessity. Mm -hmm. So almost everything I did was out of necessity, you know. <laughs> uh, I started a record label because I, I made records for other labels mm -hmm. and I wasn't really happy with how I thought they marketed or promoted the artist. Some cases they did a great job, mm. you know, like I, you know, I was young, I did Bobby Brown and I did Pebbles and I thought MCA did a great job, but then I did records for other labels and I was like, that, they didn't do it so good. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, why am I making all of these records and just handing them over to people and, and, and letting it go by chance? So maybe I should learn marketing. Maybe I should learn promotion. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should learn the entire business. And that's what I did. Um, so, you know, so I, I learned out it of off. necessity. Yeah, out of necessity because I wanted to make sure that those artists had a great shot. You know, so I'm an artist advocate. That's mm -hmm. my problem. Yep. I'm, I'm bad for corporations. Yeah. Right, because I'm, <laughs> I'm all about the artist. Absolutely. Yeah. So, for those students who say, well, I don't have any experience in, in something, you yeah. know, for you, you say, you figure it out. But what suggestions yeah. would you give to those students who are just kind of sitting there going, I don't know where to start. I don't know, you know, I don't know how to figure it out. What is that that you have? Well, for someone like me, it's very easy to say, find your passion and just follow your dreams, right? Everybody doesn't know what their passions are, you know? So what I say is, if you can't find something you love, then find something you like, right? And mm -hmm. then find out everything about that area. Find out everything. If you, if you like science, find out everything you can about science, yeah. you know? If you like math, where are all the places where having a math degree are applicable, mm -hmm. right? Just learn everything you can learn uh, uh, about whatever you might like. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if you find a passion that you love and you can make money doing it, then you're one of the lucky ones. Absolutely. But everyone doesn't get that break, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's why I don't like to say it and just throw it out there and, and, and just say everybody should have my career. Mm -hmm. I, I know that I was one of the fortunate ones mm -hmm. because, you know, I play an instrument. Mm -hmm. And I learned the business as a result of playing the instrument. But what if you don't? Yeah. Right? What if you don't? What if you're just smart? Right? Smart is great. I think actually the world is, uh, is are people in the world, uh, to the extent that money matters, mm -hmm. I think the smart people are richer than the talented people. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you get on board you know, with that. Yeah. In terms of people doing what they either love or like, as you mentioned, you know, one of the tweets that you frequently use is be epic. Actually, it's in all of your yes. tweets. Yeah, every tweet. So let me ask you, what does that mean to you? And what does that actually mean for those, your followers? It and just, what do you hope they take away from that? What it means to me when I say it every day is something I said to myself in the mirror when I was a young kid. I used to look at myself and say, just be the very best that you can be, right? And that's my message to everyone is be the best that you can be, right? Don't always measure it against what someone else's best is, but just as long as you're giving your best, right? Mm -hmm. Everything, your presentation is great, your study is great, your habits are great, you know, you take great care of yourself, mm -hmm. you try to live in great health, you try to live in peace, mm -hmm. you know, just be a, as good as you can be is my message to everybody. And, and I think there's a great result there. Absolutely. You know, for people to be great, one of the lessons that we try to teach our leaders is around the people that you surround yourself with, yes. particularly your mentors. And you touched on, you know, people in your high school that you were yes. your teachers, your uncle. Talk about the role of a mentor, you know, 
in general for our students, but also how do mentors play a role in your life and you know, where did they get you to where you are today? I've had the fortune, uh, the great fortune of having so many mentors, you know, from uh, when I was young, I had my uncles, um, my mother, of course, um, and even in business, I've had great people like uh, Clarence Avant, who you may or may not know, or Clive Davis, or, or Doug Morris, or Irving Azoff. I've just had some really great mentors, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and my thing was just to always surround myself with people that I thought were much smarter than I might be and listen to them. And that's what I've done. I still do it today. Yeah. And, and most of the time, nine out of ten times, that leads me right. And there are times when, you know, maybe that, that's not the way to go. Sometimes you got to go with your gut. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that work with me always say, follow your gut. Yeah. But in my mind, I'm always saying, follow the smart person. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, but, but yes, I've had great mentors. The ability to listen is as important as the ability to lead. And, you know, so I, I really like to listen. I don't have to be the one doing all the talking. I don't have to be the one uh, that says, this is the way we're going to go. So often I listen and I try to find from people, where's the great idea? And I'll pluck the great idea and say, guys, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And I've been that way, like, that's a natural thing for me. I've always been that way. It's not an ego trip where it has to be my way. Yeah. That's not important. The great way is the important thing. The epic way. The epic way. Love it. I want to go back to the book for a second. Yes. So, you know, lots of good stories about your artists, about your successes and your struggles and the yeah. journey along the way. What do you hope a reader takes away from this? For the students who are watching this, you know, we have over a half a million members across the country who are going to be hearing your story. So what do you hope they take away from this at this pivotal point where they're starting their own careers? I, my, I'm hoping that the takeaway uh, would be, A, believe in yourself no matter where you come from, no matter what your upbringing might be. Just believe in yourself and believe that once you establish a vision for yourself that you can actually achieve it if, if you really apply yourself. One of the other things is uh, this guy, this guy on the cover is a guy that I, I dreamed up Right, I created this character. Basically, we're all, and I'm quoting a, 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 great, a great man, we're all a figment of our imaginations. And it's just that some people have a greater ability to imagine than others. Mm -hmm. But I created that character. And that's, that's what I'm hoping people take away, that I can create a character also. I can create the me I'd like to be, mm -hmm. right? And it starts with being epic. LA, I wanna thank you for your time today. Um, to our Thank viewers, oh, absolutely, and to our viewers who are watching, we want to remind you that on February 2nd, you can pick up a copy of LA's new book, Sing to Me. So for all of our leaders watching this, we want to wish you continued success on your own journey to being a leader who makes a better world. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs>